Hey guys, Chip here. So I've been playing around for the last uh, day or so, trying to understand the best way to combine normals in Blender, because it turns out sometimes you need to add multiple normals on top of each other. And it's not an easy thing. It's not as simple as adding a mix share. And let me, let me explain this to you. Blender's new mix, mix color share has gotten a lot better. So let's take a look at this. We have this normal right here, right? So we have a normal that's just these dots. And then we have another normal. It's just, it's yeah. different values, as you can tell. So they're just, you know, that's how they look. So if I look at this, this is what we want to use. And this is using this new combined normals node group that I'm going to talk about. You plug the normal into text ray and a normal into text B. If you make the strength zero for the first one, you'll just see that. And then if you make strength zero for the next one, you can just see that. If I set these both to one. I'll get both of those. What if I was to do the same thing with just mixing them, right? So here's a mix, a mixture. I'm just mixing them. I've got the factor at 0.5. Go to normal app. It's got strength of one. So these are both, both strengths of one. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to go ahead and click here. And you're going to see the generated normal maps, as you can tell. And then I'm going to click up here. And if you can tell, there is actually a difference between this and that you can see that we're losing stuff here with the mix that we don't lose with this combined normals. So that's something to be, be aware of. You can add a, a, a bevel normal on top of all of this as well. If we go into here to put that into the normal map, you'll see that when we go into cycles, we've got this nice little bevel on top. We've got really three normals going on here. Let's go into this and tab and take a look. It's fairly simple. We've got two different textures coming in. And a regular normal map node, the standard tangent space normal map. And that now gets converted from tangent space to world space using these vector transform nodes. And then when they're converted to world, we can go ahead and add them together, normalize it, and then output it. So that's really all this is. And for those of you on the Patreon, I'll put this file up here. But if you're not on the Patreon, you can still build it yourself using that screen. I'll post this up on Patreon, but I just thought... It was worthwhile. I've been wanting to ha have a really good normal map combination. If you want to add more, right? So what you would do is shift D, just drag another one out here and grab all these, put this down and add a normal map. Let's do some mesh horizontal. So if we look at this, that's going to be that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'll just duplicate this shift D, drop it into here and then drag this color into the bottom one. So we basically have the top one going to normal A. And then we're going to take this one we just put in there. We'll put it in normal map B, right? And then we'll go back in here. And now you can see that we've got all three normal maps in here. If I go into this, you'll see that we've got all three of them correctly added. So, and if I go back here, we'll see that we have them there. Now, you can actually jack the strength up a little bit if you want. But when you start to see this black, you're starting to get something that's not supposed to look right. It seems like Eevee's a little bit more forgiving than is Cycles. Cycles, of course, you're going to get that bevel across the top, but Eevee, you won't because this bevel node doesn't work with Eevee. By the way, if you're using bevel, always put the samples to 16 if you get a chance to. It's going to always comes out better with 16 samples versus four. I did a bunch of tests on that earlier and found out that was the issue. So, so let's talk about how you would actually add this node group into your project. So basically, I'm going to go into KitOps. I've got in my EV plus cycles, or I'll, 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 again, I'll upload this material to Patreon. But in here, I've got this other CW other, and I've got this combined. And so if I sit here and I hit add material to that, it's going to actually put that there. And we're just going to go under here and look at this. So you can see that we're set to UV and flat. So if we want to, you know, way tab into this, say A, U, unwrap. And we'll just do a Q projection. Okay. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is we go instead of using UV, uh, we use object in here and we're going to get this kind of a look. So then we want to go over in each one of these materials that we're going to use. We'll say, let's go into box. We'll set it to box or each one of these. And if we actually add a modifier to this, let's go ahead and add a bevel modifier. Let's make sure we pin that to last. So, okay. We're going to add a bevel modifier and 
give it about uh, 10 segments and a little size. So you'll see that we're getting a lot of tearing, this real crisp line there. So that's what this is for, this, this blend. So point two, maybe we need something more than point two. There you go. If I go all the way to zero, we get a pretty crisp line here. And as I go larger, that's 10.7. So we can tend to hide some of that as we go larger, but that's basically cubic mapping. I, I usually keep it about 0.3 in this blend 0.3. So it kind of blends it nicely. So let's leave it like that. Okay. So let's say that we have another material. Let's create a new material and say new. Okay. We're going to make this something like this. I'm going to make it metallic, maybe make it kind of something like that. And we want to add some textures to that. So I'm going to control T using the node wrangler add on. And so this is UV we'll, we'll use object again and the image texture, I can load a, a normal map, but I have a couple loaded here. So there's one and that's the image. Let's go ahead and make this box and that you see how crisp that is. So let's go ahead and make this 0.3 and that kind of blends it a little better across the top. And then let's do shift D move this down here and let's just grab the, we want, we want these to basically be the same. We want, what have we mapped one? We're going to map the other ones. Let's just drag this one. This would be this one right here. So you can see. Uh, and now because we've already loaded this image, this material in, I can say shift a, and I can go to group and I can say combine normals and I can just drag that right in here. So that'll work. And then I'm going to put this into the normal channel and I'll take this color and put it into this one. And so now we have it. And so again, they're set to 0.5 by default, but we can move them, make one of them stronger and the other one not so strong. So you can kind of see how that works. So anyway, you can also use UV if you want to and it'll map it a little bit differently. And then you're going to have to tab into this and say, unwrap cube projection. And then you got to get rid of this box stuff. But when you do this, you don't really get a blend mode. So you're just going to get these harsh lines in there. But anyway, that's how that works. You may want to, if you have sharp angles, you may want to add a bevel node. So that'd be shift a input bevel, drag that down into there samples 16. So that'd be good. Come in here. We'll turn this off turn that on. And once we do it, go in here, we have to make sure that we're in cycles and now, yeah, something like that'll work. Yeah. So that works fine in cycles. Okay. I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching. See you online.